welcome back and thanks for being with us here on Morning Live. Now, April is Human Rights Month here in South Africa and the theme of this year's Human Rights Month is the Year of Charlotte Matleke, promoting human rights in the age of COVID-19. And it marks the 150th anniversary of the birth of the human rights campaigner Charlotte Matleke. Matleke is widely credited for having paved the way for women emancipation in this country, having become the first indigenous South African woman to graduate with a BSc degree in 1901. And she was also a strong campaigner for women's participation in church and, of course, on the political front. And this year, she would have turned 150 years old. And to help us unpack her legacy, we joined by award-winning journalist, author and activist in own right, Zubeda Jaffa. Zubeda, good to have you on Morning Live. Welcome. Sakina, wonderful to be here. So firstly, Zubeda, what is it about Charlotte Matleke that led you to uh, write a book about her? Uh, your book, of course, Beauty of the Heart, The Life and Times of Charlotte Matleke. What drew you to this icon? It, Sakina, actually, it was purely by chance. Um, I was at the, on the campus of University of the Free State and saw a poster, and that led to a conversation uh, with Professor Jonathan Jansen and eventually to my agreeing to to research the life of this amazing person. Just really by chance, because normally I, you know, we, I take long to decide on what I'm going to tackle because you live with a person for a long time. But with Mum Charlotte, it was very strange. I just agreed. I just said, yes, I want to do this, you know. And... Uh, I don't, can't really explain it, you know, just, just some feeling. I'll tell you what, we grateful you did, because so often we lament the fact that we don't know our history in this country, that we don't know our icons. Um, very often, you know, it's the same uh, hollowed ground uh, that is traversed over and over again. So it is absolutely great when we veer off that beaten track. But... And now that you've done the research um, about her, Zubeda, how would you answer the question, who is Charlotte Matleke? Charlotte Matleke, um, teacher, um, I know a hostel, a hostel is made, named after her, but she's a teacher. And um, she was a young person with a vision of, of education, of becoming educated, and, but also in helping her people become educated. So one of the first things she did, for example, when she came back to the United, from the United States, she went back to Ramakhopa village where her father was from in the north, and she had arranged night schools for the herd boys to make them literate. Now, you know, this was a vision she had and a thought she had at a, at a young, as a young girl, and uh, this was make, what makes her, you know, a trailblazer, a person who cleared the path for us, who opened the way. Um, and I'm sure she must be, wherever she is today, she must be looking down and being absolutely amazed to see that there are so many young women now who are becoming graduates. And, and uh, quite apart from the uh, political activism um, of Charlotte Matleke Zubeda, uh, you also write um, of her as a leader in church. So let's unpack this aspect of her life, uh, given the patriarchy in our society generally, and uh, perhaps more pointedly in uh, the church. Um, Mum Charlotte was the one who brought the Amy Church to South Africa. I think that must be far more celebrated. But she was the one who connected with the Amy Church in the in the US and then introduced her uncle who was a priest here and so started the conversation and the eventual uh, arrival of the Amy Church in South Africa. So by the time she came from the US, there were already members uh, uh, of the church in Ramahopa village and um, she came back to connect with all of that. So that too is an extraordinary story that has to be researched even further than what I have. And uh, she, she also 
uh, challenged the church and the political hierarchy at the time, uh, her contemporaries, uh, and said that women should be firmly part of the uh, of the of the interactions, social interactions in these organizations. And I'm, I'm curious to know how was that received at the time? You know, in uh, in uh, she arrived back in South Africa uh, in 1901, and then she couldn't travel from from home from Cape Town because of the Anglo Boer War. You know, the, the war that was actually uh, a war of white on white violence, and she then couldn't go home um, and remained in the Cape. Until she was able to, until the end of the war, till she was able to travel to um, to the north. But on her way home, she stopped in Queenstown at the Lexington Mission Station, and she attended the Congress, um, the Senate Con Congress, which was the forerunner of the the ANC, and she tabled the idea that she should be allowed to participate. And uh, the 40 so men set up a committee to discuss whether she should be allowed or women should be allowed to participate. And they came to the conclusion that it's not on, <laughs> she can't. <laughs> and fortunately, um, we have to give thanks to Saul Plaki, you know, our, our you know, star journalist at the time who then wrote, you know, vehemently about this matter and attacked this decision and said that one cannot discriminate on the basis of color or of sex. And that this is ridiculous that a woman of such stature should be excluded from discussions. And in the book, I, I published the entire text of this, of this attack um, and what it, what it showed me is that both he and Charlotte and a small group of young uh, intellectuals at the time were way ahead of their time. Um, and I mean, it took us now until 1994 to be able to vote and to be able to have a constitution that includes everybody. But I mean, then in 1902, Saul Plaki and Charlotte Mania Makreke were the forerunners, you know, and said, we should be, we should be, um, everybody should be included in church and in, and in politics. Our time is up, Zubeda, but um, just as we conclude this conversation, do you believe that enough is being done to preserve a legacy such as uh, that of Charlotte Matleke? What do you think should be done? I think it's starting to be done as a result of uh, uh, essentially the family um, uh, under the leadership of Tulas Tula Cesare Macania uh, and the institute that they've set up. And so I think that the, this birthday celebration uh, is a testimony to their efforts. Um, and it's fantastic that it's now part of the national conversation. And um, uh, tomorrow we are number 10 publishers and The Forge will host a panel discussion on the book um, at 6 p.m. And so we are deepening the conversations all the time. And I think we are on the right track. Well, absolutely fabulous. And thank you so much, Zubeda Jaffa, for uh, sharing some of your insights from your book uh, with us. Award-winning journalist, author and activist Zubeda Jaffa talking to us there about her book about uh, Charlotte Makleke. It's called Beauty of the Heart, The Life and Times of Charlotte Makleke. And we will bring you more about Charlotte Makleke in the last half hour of the show right now.